If you're just tuning in, it's our Ladies' Night Out, and we're discussing the export of some of our leaders and their expertise. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or SMS or WhatsApp 0818-038-4663. You can also call us via the number on screen as our phone lines are now open. Please remember, if you do choose to call us, please turn your TV set um, right down so that we can hear you clearly. So I think we have some messages now. Yes, oh, we do. Awesome. this is uh, Hi Uti, the exported leader syndrome is a sad development. I think this is down to our value system. A system that does not reward merit can never thrive. These people excel in their positions abroad because the rules are clear and goal, goal posts aren't shifted while the game is on. We celebrate mediocrity and taint it with questionable concepts like quota system, federal character, tribalism. If they were in Nigeria, they would most likely not have been schemed out for some of the reasons stated above. We need to reward merit and inculcate even amongst the youth. For example, I expected girls to be massive followers of Okonjo Iwala and her likes, but they prefer to celebrate reality TV wannabes. No, I think we celebrated Okonjo Iwala, right? There was a day set out for her. That's from a former... So, okay. yeah, I mean, for my spot on, that is an awesome comment. But what I think what she's trying to say is that the kind of followership that we should be seeing for those kinds of people, right. it'll, be, it'll be one day. You know, we celebrated her, we had the challenge, we know the name. But is there that fanatic followership that you would have for That's a celebrity? Our Maybe not. Is based on like physical money. Exactly. And now like that you vanity. actually speak on value system, we have a comment here. Mm. It says, I'm Imelda. I totally agree with your point. Nigerians follow money not person. So, um, Lamy, do you have any comments for us before we go ahead? No, I don't. Uh, my phone is actually engaged. Sir. Okay. Okay, uh, so I believe we have our first caller. We have OK from Abuja. OK, can you hear us? Of course. Good evening. I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. You're coming in loud and clear as well. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank Let's you hear what so you have much. To say. And I want to say a very beautiful evening to Sanze and, of course, the other host on the show. Okay, thank you. Actually, my contribution tonight is relative to the brain drain syndrome. I think, like they would say, when the use of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. If we as a people do not appreciate what we have, I mean, if someone else see their use, of course, they will take it. Because the world right now is a global village. So if people can appreciate you from outside of your own shores and see your value better than what the people you call your own are seeing you for, why not, if not? Because I, for example, if I belong to a system where I feel I'm not being appreciated, it's just like I'm in organization A, and regardless of how much I put in, they don't, they don't get to see it or appreciate it. Or even when they do, they give the credit to someone else because of ethnicity or something else. So organization B decide to see my, you know, my use and they come for me. If they place a better offer, of course, I will take it. Because at the end of the day, it's about what suits you best and who appreciates what you are bringing to the table. So me, if Okondra Wela Oh, sorry, Ugozi Okondre Wela, who is now the DJ of World Trade Organization, yeah. was one time a finance minister, and she made it a point of duty to make sure that Nigeria saves mm -hmm. towards the rainy days. And there were a lot of governors then that were saying, for Christ's sake, it's not, it's not rainy yet. Why not share the money? And now the country is in a mess. So if you don't appreciate somebody like that and a country like, you know, a country like U.S. had to even, you know, endorse the same person, they have no other choice than to take her. To me, I would not even look back. If I was in Asia, I would not look back. So that's, a, that's my take. We must learn to appreciate our own. Thank we you. must learn to appreciate our own and see their value or else we'll keep losing them on a daily basis. Like, like one of your hosts mentioned about the medical practitioners, it is worst because like she rightly said, on a daily basis, they are living. 
because as a medical doctor now it's just part of you you should you should make it a priority if you are a medical doctor that part of my savings is my jackpot savings you in fact you should start having something like oh, wow. jackpot savings <laughs> so that by the time you are you've been able to put some funds together you leave yeah. because how can like they will tell you in the, in the political cycle they will say after god is government but in the in the medical cycle i also believe that after god are medical doctors yeah. how can you how can you even be yeah. owing medical doctor yeah. salaries like is unthinkable yeah. so if they have if they have better persons that you know have better services have better you know packages for their thank services you. they will leave thank you so much okay you've told us so much and we totally totally agree agree with you Very thank passionate. you so much for watching ways <laughs> thank you Very i mean Sansi, he shared a lot and one of the things that um was pointed out in the comment that you mm -hmm. read was the element of meritocracy now when that image of the tweet went um, viral somewhat. There was the, the second part of the tweet spoke to the fact that those three people represented our core ethnicity in Nigeria mm -hmm. and you know how it was nice to see that. Now we have all variants of zoning. I mean now 2023 we're fighting it should come to the southeast. What is the place of meritocracy of these people have earned their positions they weren't picked because they were nigerian you know it wasn't like a quota system that says oh it must come around to nigeria the next dg of the wtu so what is the place of meritocracy in this process of picking our leaders i think meritocracy is um it, it doesn't exist in nigeria mm. it, it I, I don't i don't think it does maybe in the private sector it does but when it comes to government it doesn't i think it's about um who has favored you? Who do you know? Who have you, you know, stood by for a while? So we're not looking at things like what is your um, establishment over the years, um, school credit, uh, what are you bringing to the table? I don't think we look at stuff like that. I mean, I haven't been there in decision making, right? But what I read from the news, which is the access that we have, if there is some other thing going on to going on there, I'm sorry, I don't know because you guys don't give us information. You do not grant interviews. So when you begin to grant interviews and tell us the truth, then we will say it as it is. But until now, I'm saying what I read in the papers and what I hear from you know the few interviews. We don't uh, meritocracy doesn't. I don't, I don't see it. Okay. Because so meritocracy we'll, comes we'll from transparency. Just, yeah, we'll just take a break. We have a, a caller on there, I believe, uh, from Delta State, Chief Kenneth. Hello. Good evening. Let's hear what you have to say. Uh, good evening. Yes, uh, my contribution is simple. Uh, the, the personality of Okoje Wela and the addition of the African Development Bank. They are wonderful people, career people that Nigeria have missed. And the Nigeria system, political system, is a system that does not advance professionalism in order to develop the political system. So therefore, as people begin to advance on their own, what the next door they look for is the exit door because they want more career development outside because what from what the whole country cannot offer now if you look at when this present administration came in there were so much blame on okojo iwela activity as a minister. But today we have all come to realize that is a potential that Nigeria will never have in the next future. So my contribution is to this program. Thank you, the, Thank you. the, the, the presenter <laughs> of this program. And we should let Nigeria know that it is right time we encourage people come up yeah. in professionalism. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeff Kana. Thank you for watching Ways. And he raises a very fantastic, because I mean, we can't but talk about this and talk about the elephant in the room. And um, maybe I'll come to Lamy for this. The elephant for me in the room, when I look at these three people, and in fact, here I'm going to bring in a fourth person who is the former head of the SEC, Aruma Ote. Mm. 
when I was looking at the different tenures of these people, in fact, when you look at the comments on, on this tweet, people say, eh, when they were ministers, what did they do? Um, the Amina Muhammad, oh, how did she get to this role? She advanced so quickly. Uh, when she was finance minister, there was this issue, there was that issue. So again, we come back to this thing of we actually not valuing our people. But it actually, in the case of Aruma Ote, even becomes antagonistic. You know, if you remember back to when the whole issue happened with um, Honorable Hembe, and the fact that she stood her ground and, you know, she was seasoned enough to stand toe to toe with this kind of person. What does it say about us Lamy as Nigerians that we seek to pull our leaders down. I know that we've talked on the show many times about the trust issue we have with our leaders. So I can't say that there isn't a basis for it. But what are your thoughts there? Um, <laughs> what I think is, number one, we're a country of over 200 million with diverse tribes and religious inclinations. That you must always put at the back of your mind. Then the value system in Nigeria and also the culture of social media. Because behind your keypads, you can say anything. So it's also increasing people's audacity, you know, to be rude, to say nasty things to people. But that's just by design. We must also see from the fact that not quite a number of people are receiving quality education in Nigeria. If you look at um, the Western world, an African must go to school up until the age of 60. And Nigeria, that education is not on even the back burner. I'm not even talking of front burner now. It's not even in the scheme of things. How do you expect the citizenry of such a country to engage when it comes to intellectualism? It's going to be very reduced. So I don't even bother, especially when I see people online, because the quality of education in Nigeria is so reduced. OK, look at people who are supposed to be in university. They are home. They've been home for how many years? There's already disillusioned. So what kind of, how do you expect them to engage when you now talk about issues like this? They, are, they don't see anything good anymore in the country. Yeah. So I, I really do not blame people. I don't. Yeah. Our religious inclinations has really colored our views and our ethnicity. If you look at the United States, in as much as there are a lot of people that have migrated from that different nationalities, you know that once you arrive in the United States, you must advance. You start behaving like an American. So the unity of purpose is there. Everybody's aligned. Everybody, they all, are their allegiance is to the American culture. The moment you step into America, I want to behave like an American, I want to talk like an American. But here in Nigeria, it's the opposite. It is so fragmented. We don't have any common ideology. We don't have common values. There are no basics anymore, no, you know, no benchmark for what is good and what is bad. All the lines are totally blurred. So how, so people would say different things online. So the quality of discussion would always, and mark my words, it will reduce each time for each generation. If we don't start up and taking the issue of education seriously. You know, Lamy has raised such a valid point. Ethnicity. The thing that should be our very diversity that should be our strength our advantage, yes. now is a, it's a huge chasm. Can you know, <laughs> I was reading um, an article where um, uh, Ungas Yokonjewela was referred to as being from Delta State. And there was this fight immediately about trying to claim her Igbo sister and trying to, and it, the whole, her achievement was lost in the commentary. The conversation, okay. All that was left was the fight of what the Igbos have done, Igbo exactly, Igbo. what the Igbos have done versus the Yoruba. You know, and you see this, and this chasm that we've created by ethnicity, how are we going to overcome it? I don't know, Uti. I think, um, first of all, well, this is just me thinking off the top of my head. This is what I would do. Forget the fact that you're, I mean, people want recognition. The average human wants to be recognized for something. We, we like to be celebrated. Okay, so take away ethnicity, celebrate people for, for, it's like racism as well. It doesn't matter if I'm black or I'm white or I'm brown or I'm Asian or, or, or Middle East, it doesn't matter. 
this is what you want. This is Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. B fits the brief. Okay, then narrow it down to who is the best person for the job. My, my, my skin color, my tribe, it shouldn't matter. So until we learn to ignore all those things, I don't think we're ever going to get, get, yeah. um, get over it. I, I think that really does bring us back to the point of, of meritocracy. But even when I think about this ethnicity, sometimes I feel like if we were able to um, agree Mm -hmm. Or if we're not even agree, if we're able to celebrate, I think that's the word I should use. Right. If we're able to celebrate exemplary people, regardless of their ethnicity, mm -hmm. so that I, as an Igbo person or Yoruba person or Hausa person, Shekiri, whatever the case may be, I can see members of my tribe mm -hmm. who have been celebratedly, celebrated, sorry, wholeheartedly mm -hmm. by the entire country. That you know might start to close that gap that says um, we, we really just need, because I can't, ethnicity has become the basis of everything. And we're seeing this happening more and more in the clashes that we're seeing, one tribe versus another, yeah. and it's moving around the country. So like I know someone who lives mm. in Abuja, and this person has been trying to get contract for a long time. And she told me that, listen, I think I'm going to get um, an Alsa help, so maybe she would be teaching me Hausa because when you know how to speak Hausa, yeah. right? I mean, you, irrespective of your tribe, once you know how to speak Hausa, you're like automatically you're favored. Yeah. I'm like, that shouldn't be so. Why do I have to learn your language to yes. favor you? I, for, to get favored. I should learn your language because I'm interested in it. I'm interested in your way of life. However, if I do not have a thing for language, my pigeon or the should lingua franca, enough. it should be should enough, enough to get Absolutely. me because what I'm presenting to you is not the language. What I'm pre uh, uh, presenting you presenting to you mm -hmm. is my proposal of this yeah. is what I can do. So go through it. Absolutely. If it fits your bill, then appoint me for the job. Excellent. I think we have a few more comments to take. So Sanzi, I think you have one. Okay. So let's go. Madam. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Can we too quickly take the comments? We're running out Let of time. Let me take a message. Please. So um, this is from Raphael Akori uh, from Zaria. As long as oh, hello, as long as we celebrate quota system, mediocre. As long as we celebrate quota system, mediocrity rather than meritocracy, and expect good leadership. I didn't get that. Okay, yeah. so then quickly, good leadership yeah. will be a mere optic illusion. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, someone just decided to send us a comment. I think I like this one, so I'm going to read it. You ladies <laughs> are looking so great and beautiful tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. much. <laughs> didn't put a name. So Lami, we're wrapping up. I'll give you one minute to quickly share your final thoughts. I was going to comment on what both of you said earlier. Sorry, please go Talking ahead. Talking about uh, diversity. I mean, I don't see any strength in diversity. Only I don't really? understand what that means. What? How can people be different and be stronger in their different? It gives us a broader it's not bandwidth. Possible. But it gives us a broader bandwidth. What it's might not make lie. sense to me will make sense to you. It's a lie. Because I have one minute, I'm not going to be able to delve into that. Oh. Well, it is a lie. And the moment you start telling ourselves the truth, Lame. the better for us. That is the only time. So we have balanced oh, no. diet. You know we the reason we have balanced <laughs> diet is no. because carbohydrates and protein and vitamins and Sanzi. minerals, they complement each other. Sanzi. Imagine a world where all you have to eat is, carb is carbs. Thank you very Come much, on. Sanzi. So we're going to wrap up now. Lami, thank you. <laughs> We've run out of time, sadly, as you can see. It was quite a spirited conversation today. Um, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action and this year we started our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. If you are a company please partner with us by allocating internship slots and if you're a job seeker keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles. This will be an all year round engagement so tell a friend to keep all eyes on Waze. In case you missed today's quote here it is. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country amongst his own people and that's from the bible we will see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screens have a wonderful evening <laughs> bye <laughs>